everyone to the X Men Monday podcast. My name is Ryan. With me is Alan. As always, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. Awesome. Episode twenty one. I don't know if I said that because uh, our special guest and resident co host Rob messed me up. How you doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing me, great. You threw you me all off. You threw me all <laughs> off. Uh, but you can find <laughs> all of our episodes at ColumbusComicsCorner.Podbean.com. Uh, if you want to follow us on Twitter, you can do so at ComicsCornerPod. Uh, we have a website, which is ColumbusComicsCorner.Tumblr.com, where you can find all of our uh, written Monday X-Men Monday reviews. Um, I just put up my Valkyrie piece because I'm hyped to see the movie on Wednesday. Alan has already seen it. Have you seen it, Rob? I have not seen it yet. Ooh, okay. I'm the odd man out here. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> don't be spoiling nothing. No, you, yep, don't you do it. <laughs> it was a Marvel movie. But probably one of the best ones, I think. Mm. I'm hoping. I could adamantly agree with that. There we go. All right, but okay. we are not here to talk about Thor. We are here to talk about X-Men books. Um, no news this week, although I thought I had a little bit of a scoop, but I didn't. It was just a misprint. Because um, on Preview's World, the Mojo Crossover Part 5... X-Men Gold uh, comes out this week as you're listening to this. And on previous world, it said written by Colin Bunn. And I was like, huh? Is that a little switch up there? That I messaged him. He's like, nope. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well. well. Oh, well. <laughs> but we'll see. Womp, womp. Womp, womp. But let's go ahead and get into our first book. And what are we talking about, Danger? Iceman number seven, written by Cena Grace. Art by Robert Gill with colors from the great Rochelle Rosenberg. See Spider Woman for a better example. Letters by VC's Joe Sambino. After defeating the Sentinels, they're on the loose. The champions regroup at a diner where they uh, finally find out how Iceman first met Black Widow. Uh, we then flash back to the Xavier Institute where Iceman and Angel decide to go back and uh, Iceman realizes he's not on any team right now and he thinks he may be in love with Judah, so he decides to move to L.A. Yeah, so we are back with Iceman and this champion's reunited. Reunited, excuse me. Um, didn't really feel like a, a reunition of the champions. I don't know. No. Just... Mm-hmm. Uh, they were just there, kind of. They were there to give us a very lame reason why he met when the first time he met Black Widow, and they were all wasted, pointless, pointless, pointless. The whole premise of this issue, I thought personally, was wasted. Of the last, well, the, definitely this issue. I would say this in the last issue. I would have thought. If you're getting a team back together that haven't seen each other for a while and comic readers haven't seen them together in a very long time, they should have done a like a reminisce issue where they're all going around talking about how they met Black Widow and kind of showing new readers like, this is what we used to do. This is what the team used to be. This is how we all met. This is who everybody is. Because I know some people were reading this like, who's Hercules? Right. Oh, sure. So simply yeah. by adding just one more issue, one filler issue and seeing Grace's mm-hmm. uh, case would have been fine with me. Uh, but but yeah, uh, Rob, where we saying Actually, it would have been an improvement. <laughs> well, a filler issue would have been an improvement. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. A, that's a lot. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Well, this issue happened. I guess that's a fact. Uh, <laughs> not a lot happened in it, even though there seems to be thirteen very disparate scenes. Everything's throwing at uh, us. Everything's thrown at everything. us. Everything. <laughs> and with the exception of one joke about Storm towards the end, nothing landed. Uh, so I, I don't, ugh, I don't, I, mean, I, 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 I'm almost, I'm almost at a loss for words of what to say about the quality of the series and specifically this issue. But, uh, I, look, if you're a fan of Iceman and you're a fan of this writer and you're a fan of the series thus far, my deepest and humblest apologies for the things that I'm going to say during this podcast. But, uh, I just find it almost entirely irredeemable. I, I almost, I almost don't find anything enjoyable about the series. No, anymore. unfortunately not. No, it, it was crazy. Is when I read this, the first page kind of it hooked me a little bit. Like, okay, this might actually be an interesting issue. And then it just continued to get worse. Well, that first and worse page, that first page was only there to say, say, hey, this is coming up that, next. Yep, yep. yep. And I and I knew preview. it. Yep. Reading it, I knew that, but I was hoping, like, okay, let's get a good two or three pages of this before we get back to 
the whole champions fiasco and we immediately got back there and it immediately got terrible yeah i mean it still suffers from a messy script i mean i kept i always rolled my eyes there's just no natural progression to to scene grace's storytelling and the art even the no. artists i think are struggling like what to do with this script because at some points you know some things just don't line up it's right you know, i even i thought the frost giant was cool but even that didn't really make sense as they kind of dragged him away from all the buildings and these hills came out of nowhere. Uh, it, it just didn't yeah. line up. Well, from what I understood, these old school Sentinels, because, of course, they're basically movie props that are animated. I don't know. Uh, they, um, It seems to me like having that Frost Giant was a gross overreaction to what should be a relatively simple enemy. You know, like not too long ago in X-Men Gold, we had these like massive nano sentinel hybrid tech sentient nonsense. And that was like a gigantic, gigantic calamity. Now here we are in gold and it's like, oh my God, what are we going to do to take down three standard issue sentinels when we're, there was like seven of us versus I mean, this just seems utterly ridiculous. Well, what's um, crazy is, is, is they weren't even really standard issue sentinels because he made the comment exactly. like, oh, they can't learn from how we're fighting them. Yeah. So that right there just says, okay, we can just fight them normal and just get rid of them. Get rid of I them. mean, look, Shut I don't, them down. I don't want to <laughs> disown. I don't want to disown Warren, but Angel could have handled this. Yeah, you know, like yeah. that's how easy this enemy was. You know. Yeah. Um. So, uh, uh but, okay. First of all, I want to say that there are actually some moments in this issue I enjoyed. So. Uh, maybe we will we'll bounce to those just because otherwise yeah. we're just going to crap all over this. I, if, if we're going to do that, I, I did enjoy the uh, the scene when he gets back to the mansion. And he meets up with like the the gold team yep. and um, some of the Gen X team is there. I like that yeah. scene. Yeah, Absolutely. the best Me line. Too. That's where my favorite line is, where um, Kitty mentions, mentions about sneaking Jubilee, sneaking her kids into the danger room. I was like, yes. "Where is that? Let <laughs> where me is see that?" that. <laughs> I mean, it is not enough to redeem this series, but I you got to give credit. Iceman is the only series where you get to see the genuine cohabitation of the Gold Team and Generation X. Yeah, you yeah. don't get to see that happen in either of those series. You only see it in Iceman, so that's kind of nice. Yeah, I think they and allow it, him it, to play around with kind of what he wants because. Obviously, it's not really tied into anything else, and it even is because he even mentioned at the end he's leaving; he's not on a team. So they, pro- I think, Marvel probably just say, "Hey, you can kind of play around with what you want, um, but it may not fall into another book. But whatever, do your thing." Sure. Um, I likewise. I everything that happened at the mansion, I enjoyed. Um, I like seeing the the whole silliness with the uh, um, movie viewing. Uh, <laughs> primarily, uh, I laughed yeah. for the first time. In seven issues of Iceman, I finally actually had a nice chuckle, which was uh, there's a scene, of course, where they're all gathered around arguing about which movie to watch. And I'm assuming that's Iceman's voiceover work of what he thinks that these characters should be saying. And he refers to Storm's quote, uh, benevolent empress voice. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Right yeah. on the money. I mean, that's good. You have, you, you, you have, <laughs> there's only two options for Storm's voice, benevolent empress or the X-Men cartoon from 1992. Yeah, um, those are the only options. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only storm voice you ever hear, you know. And frankly, they're both equally magnificent. Um, okay, well, that's it. That's all I got for what I enjoyed. That is, um, but it doesn't even. The thing is, it doesn't even have to do with any of. I nothing. mean, not nothing. Yeah, as far as what we've seen in this past, how many issues was this? Was this two only? This was, uh, yeah, this two. was two issues. This, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So. All right, so now I'm ready for my rant. Are you ready for my rant? Yep, bring it on. Um, so the problem I have had with this entire series and with this writer specifically is that you're taking a character from 1963, uh, an established character, an Omega-level potential mutant, um, perhaps not the most, not the first X-Men you think of when you're running down a mental roster, but still a very significant and important character in the Marvel Universe. It wasn't this writer's choice to make this character gay. But rather than tell a story that was that is authentic to the character, all of this, all seven of these issues in this current series seem to be forcing the writer's autobiography onto um, uh, a, a, at the expense of continuity, and that's what's pissing me off as a fan. All the way up to the point where we're now at the end, where Iceman, who has never heard the phrase Netflix and chill before, is now moving to West Hollywood to basically live out the writer's personal life. Personal life, and yeah. that 
pisses me off. Yeah, that's a really good point. Because it even plays with, like, the character staying the same age and, like you were just saying, him adapting his personal life, with, especially with the dialogue. Um, right. Some, some of the dialogue just... As far as, like, one of the jokes just don't land. His Iceman's jokes don't no. land. Uh, but he is forcing a, a, a lot of, like, modern humor. Um, it just doesn't feel like it would fit the age of this character. But I guess you have to go with it. So... I, so you have a character who is a gay man who has been in the closet for a million years, who is trying to figure himself out, but all of a sudden he's snapping around telling people, "Yes, Queen." I yeah, mean, that it was, just doesn't it doesn't line up. Is it bad no. I had to look that up? <laughs> <laughs> well, well I mean, is, 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 is it bad that I think it might have been last week or the week before we said this that um, two pages of Generation X told this kind of story way better than seven yes, issues of, yeah, of Iceman? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It made, it, it made I, I would, it way more believable. Totally. I would trade more for Iceman any day. Yeah. You know? um, I'll tell you, the thing I had to look up was that during, um, after the Frost Giant is created, uh, Iceman says, Toho, eat your heart out. I'm like, what's Toho? I had to look oh, the Godzilla. Yeah. <laughs> I got that oh, okay. I'm a huge Godzilla <laughs> fan. Even I was kind of like, uh, no. no that <laughs> I was like, <laughs> what? No. I was like, what? what? I, literally, because of the way this writing goes and the way these the dialogue happens issue to issue, I saw Toho. I was like, Okay, well, what kind of like deep cut RuPaul's Drag Race reference is that that I had to look that up? <laughs> and I was like, oh no, actually, this is something that as a comic fan I should have known. But um, <laughs> but that's what it is. Like you know, it, it's got to the point where even if the writing isn't that bad, I'm still expecting I'm still expecting it to be bad because you've now given me seven issues of oh, the really same just thing over, of the same over. kind of annoying crap that's not authentic. It's not authentic to gay people. It's not authentic to Iceman. It's not authentic to the Marvel Universe. It, I, yeah. All it is is just an this Elseworld. writer's autobiography. An Elseworld That's, story. And, totally. And I just, I don't know. I'm so sorry if you really enjoy this series and I'm crapping all over it. You're, you're welcome to tweet me hate mail. That's fine. Yeah, and we, but, I, every um, month I always, I probably come off as an asshole review in this book because I just don't, you know, if, like you said, if, you, if people are liking it, good for you, for sure. Um, but yeah, there are there are a lot of issues that have to be talked about with this with this title, unfortunately. Totally, and you know, and and the idea that this writer couldn't even artfully pull off, pull off the um, the whole premise of why they're in Los Angeles for Black Widow in the first place. Yeah, um, they're walking. Uh, uh, Judah and Iceman are walking around uh, later uh, after the Sentinel nonsense, and it was nonsense. Uh, and says something like, are we walking by these Russian shops so you can show me how well you listen to me talk about my friend who passed away? And that's it. Like, yeah. Um, and I immediately was just like, what is this shit? Like, what, what, who's, what is the point of this? Well, why, what I don't get, especially since you just brought that scene up, is uh, from a writing aspect, why not have worked that into the story? Why not have made us care about him falling for Judah over a conversation of him reminiscing about his dead friend? Right. Yeah. Like let's, 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 why, why did we get a, like a scene of them going out to dinner and him, you know, asking Bobby, "Why are you here?" and him explaining, like, "Well, you know, I have a friend. You know, we were teammates for years and kind of reminiscing on why he have he didn't. Is it me or did nobody seem upset that Black Widow was died died in these last two issues? No, nobody like, cares. Nobody did, cares. Did, That's did, the problem. Did, did you get a sense that the team was actually mourning her loss? Did you see anybody crying? Did you see anybody nope. really, really reminiscing no, at no. all? Nope. Iceman even leaves Nobody the champions to clean up the mess ah. so he can go on the date. Yeah. And no respect, being selfish. And again, like you were saying, like, no one cared to talk about Black Widow dying. That's the whole point of this fucking arc. <laughs> Sorry. We didn't, even see her, right. we, didn't even see her, we didn't even see her funeral or anything. Like, who you would have thought if you were working Editor's note, that see, see Tales of Suspense, starring Hawkeye and Bucky Barnes. Yes. Right. <laughs> oh, man. So right then, when I saw that that was coming out, and saw the solicit that they are going to be investigating her death. I was like, well, Cena Grace has nothing to play around with there. Now he has to make his own story. And, I mean, yeah. to touch on the business op or, um, entrepreneur, uh, that went nowhere as well. Um, they gave her a pass. Like, you know, Iceman yep. was like, hey, I'll, here's the, uh, was it his, one of the school the, the, uh, professor at professor. UCLA. Yeah. Instead yeah. of that, it, it could have been like maybe there's a compromise. Hey, you have to go probation, but hey, I'm going to help you out. I want to. You're on the right track, but you did mess up. You almost killed people. 
You almost killed people. <laughs> Why wasn't it something like you were? You, you almost killed people. You were smart enough to actually, you know, at least make these sentinels halfway work. I got somebody at Shield who needs like a tech expert. Well, we'll do something like that. That way, she's not all the way off the, off the hook. She's got a job at Shield now. She's well, holding her, her. Shield's no longer endeavor. around. But no this is the Elseworld story. It's a really oh, well, you, you know, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like, put yeah. her with some other group or something like that. Put right. her with some agency or organization. I don't care what it is. Just put her somewhere over to the side. Because you're right. She just got a free pass. She almost killed people. How much? Uh, what kind of property damage did she cause? Like, right. <laughs> Is there any injury? Yeah, really? like, do we, maybe somebody somebody could have died. Where's the know. court? Where's the court system at right now? I know. Where's the Where's the police? Where's the, Where's anything? <laughs> where Where is anything? And you know the thing is, is that like it just feels like, and I'm not, I don't know if this was uh, Cena Grace's objective or this was a Marvel mandate or what happened here, but it just seems like we forced a significant moment in to, to in Marvel 2017, which is the death of Black Widow. Mm-hmm. to kind of con- contritely convince all of these characters to get Iceman to Los Angeles so that Iceman can live out Cena Grace's personal life. And yeah. that was all it was for. Why? I, and, and it insults me because it's Black Widow. Like, you know, love it or hate the fact of it, but, you know, movie Avengers Marvel characters are far more popular right now than comic book X-Men characters. Right. And to to kill off Black Widow, who the average American can probably recognize much faster than comic book gay Iceman, you know, and then have all of that turn into, well, let's just live out a, a a very cliched queer as folk episode is just utterly stupid. And again, I'm I'm finding it very hard to find a redeeming quality in the series. Yeah. Yeah. It was, I mean, the the scenes, uh, just real quick, the scenes with, um, with Judah and Iceman just also just felt unnatural as well. Totally unnatural, just unrealistic. Yeah. What were you gonna say, Alan? Uh, I was just gonna make a comment on that whole the whole Black Widow fiasco here because uh, the, the, you're right, Robbie, perfectly right. Uh, people do recognize Black Widow from the movies way quicker than they would Iceman. But what's crazy is Black Widow has been this character as of lately, at least from the movie aspect, where um, they don't want to acknowledge that she exists in the movies technically. You find yeah. all the merchandise of all the Avengers, oh, yeah. except for like Black Widow. Absolutely. And then here we, and then here we go in the comics where she's kind of sort of getting the same treatment. Like, yeah. she should be a big deal in the comics from the movies. And yeah, like, you know point. what? We're just gonna kill her off over here, and then we're gonna slide it over to Iceman and bury it. Yeah, that's fucked up. Yeah. Um. And of course, let, let's all talk about this too. You know, there was this huge setup in the well, huge is relative. There was a setup in the last <laughs> issue. Uh, that um, that Iceman has this very embarrassing first encounter with Black Wom- Widow that he's just so devastated and doesn't want to admit. And then they reveal it in this issue. And all it is is that you were a closeted guy who made some relatively misogynistic comment to Black Widow that Black Widow probably literally rolled her eyes at because she could she could snap his neck in a heartbeat <laughs> exactly. and you know and it's like and furthermore nobody would judge Iceman for making a comment like that because given his circumstance of being in the closet and being a low-level playboy at the time you know i mean i i look at it like really that was the big reveal this is telling me more about cena grace's personal politics than it is about the character of Iceman, and it pisses me off that this is what's happening Oh, that is funny because um, when, when that part came up, I, I had almost forgot in the last issue that he was like, "Oh, I don't want to talk about it. it's embarrassing." And then I read it, it was like, "That's it. That's that's it. That, that's that, all that's we got." That, that, that was Iceman back then. Like, there's there's tons of female characters in the X comic books that can talk about him making like slightly misogynistic, pervy comments to them. That's what Iceman used to do. Like. <laughs> Well, frankly, that's what half of them did. I mean, oh, yeah. if you if you if you want to have a fun, really gross read, check out Gambit's first twenty appearances. Oh, you know? yeah. <laughs> you know, like, so uh, you want to you want to feel gross about something? Check out. I was like, oh, I cringe even now, but still, go uh, go back and read the first few issues of of the original X Men when everybody on the team was perving over Jane, including yeah. Professor X. Yeah, every yeah, everybody <laughs> perved over everybody. <laughs> right. So I don't know. I. I guess if there's a redeeming quality here, it's hard to find, but if it exists at all, it's the idea that Iceman might be going to Los Angeles and just subtract himself from the X-Men universe for a little while, which, by the way, is, is frankly the most fitting thing to his continuity. 
it takes me back to all the times where he disappeared to go work on his accounting career, you yep. know? So yeah. fine. You know, it, let Iceman go be Iceman for a few years and we don't need to check in with him, but if not for periodically in a one shot or something like that. And hopefully, I mean, I know that it isn't, but I'd like to see this move to Los Angeles to be the beginning of the end of the series. The end of, yeah. That could be that, the case. That's where, with, I was, that's where I was headed. Yeah. With, uh, with the next arc being the two sons, uh, that's going to happen. Yes, I, I would. I would love if that's what happens in the next arc. Is he goes to to L.A. We get the two sons thing, and then that's the end of the series. Yep. Yeah, because that's got to make space for Rogan Gambit and Legion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, I will say one redeeming ish thing was the the flashback art, the halftone style, the seventy style. That yes. was really cool. Yeah, I wish that would have been. You got me that. Was, that was it, really cool. It did, it did take you back. Yeah, I wish yeah, that, that would have been cool. throughout the entire issue. That'd have been cool. Um, but it sucks too. But see, like, go ahead. I was gonna say, see, that would have been awesome though if they would have had the flashback issue with the whole team sitting around talking about experiences yeah. with Black yeah. Widow. Could've we could have had all different kinds of art. We could have had classic art from all yeah. different periods. I was gonna say because uh, Ro- Rochelle Rosenberg, one of my favorite favorite colorists. See example oh, yeah. for Spider Woman because she's amazing colors and I think her talents are actually being wasted on this um this title right now and yes it's yeah it sucks because yeah she's one of my faves and yeah yeah but but uh yeah I think that's gonna be about it because I don't I mean I don't think we really have any more positives to say um, we're probably I mean, not if anything else it's gonna be more <laughs> we, we, more we, we covered the score. one scene. <laughs> Uh, that being said, what's going to be your score, Alan? Mm, do I have to? Called you out. I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 oh, man. I, okay, I'm going to give this a three and a half, and that three and a half is only for the last scene in the book <laughs> at the X-Mansion. That, that scene was not five. there. <laughs> yeah, that, that scene was not there. This I would have gave us a point five, but that scene gave bumped it up. All right, how about you, Rob? Oh, well, under the same logic, I came up with a lower score. Uh, <laughs> so uh, again, if I would have given it lower if it weren't for that the, the ending and the X Mansion scene, and you're right, the Black Widow flashback scene does have some really awesome art, and Rosenberg is a good colorist. Um, uh, so I'm going to give it a two and a half, two point five. Yep, yep, yep. After talking about it, I was at a three. I had to go two point seven. Ooh, I had to be the odd man out again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, well, uh, uh. well, at least Ryan's not the lowest this time. That's good. Right there, you go. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go ahead and get on to our next book. As always, Rob, we want to thank you for joining us. Sometimes it's not going to be the best book. Sometimes it's going to be the greatest books. This week. I'm hey, not I, the I greatest. <laughs> you know no. what? I love the X Men. I still buy it, even exactly. though I didn't like it. I still, exactly. I still support them. But anyway, thanks for having me. Of course. What are we talking about next, Danger? Old Man Logan, number thirty, written by Ed Brisson, art by Mike Deodato Jr. with colors from Frank Martin, Andres Mosa, and Chris Sotomayor. Hawkeye uses a flashbang arrow to dismantle the standoff with Malachi. When Cambria reveals Maestro's true plan to the children, everyone gets a piece of Maestro. Logan challenges Maestro and the two beat the shit out of each other before Maestro retreats into a cave by his lonesome. The Maestro cult go their separate ways while Logan and Hawkeye make their way back to their respected homes. Well, yeah, I, I like how you uh, you put that in there, you know, Maestro in a cave by his lonesome. I mean, while that was kind of a downer just a little bit for the issue, that was funny how you studied it. Yeah, we'll, yeah, uh, we'll definitely get to that. Yeah, we're going to get to that. But um, first of all, let's get this out of the way, as usual. Great art in the book. Yes. Um, that actually, real quick, was, I'm glad you mentioned that because that brought up my score by 0. .5. Because did you notice? Danger reminded me that there are three colorists on this mm, book. And did yeah. you even notice that? No, I do not. That's amazing. Right. All, <laughs> all the books that we've done where we can tell there's like three different artists or four different colorists on the book. That's that's an amazing job. Yeah, these guys, you know, had they must have had a barbecue and everyone was <laughs> on the same page. They're like, hey, here's, here's what we're gonna do. Everyone was full, drinks in hand. They rocked and rolled this. Um, bravo! That like, and that's why my score is gonna be going up a little bit higher now. It's awesome. Um, 
I, I, I want to get this out the way also. I, I did enjoy the beginning of the book. Um, yes. It, obviously, obviously, it wasn't in your band, but we're going to have to talk about this. Because in the beginning, we finally get an explanation for how Maestro got the rest of the Hawk gang and how he made his way to the Wastelands. And what a great opening scene. Cause, yeah, yeah, and that was a good scene. Yeah, because he's saying how he, he pilfered it from Dr. Doom during the Secret Wars t- or timeline. Uh, and he was like, oh, unfortunately, after his demise, I was able to get it. Um, and apparently, he was trying to spread his empire to uh, alternate dimensions. Anyways, kids, come anyway. on in. <laughs> Hop on in. <laughs> in. After, yeah, exactly. I, I thought that was brilliantly done. Uh, I really got a chuckle out of that. And just the way it is, the fact that he does have this and that kind of uh, kind of I have some issues with later on as well. Um, but we'll, we'll get to that. Um, but yeah, I mean, we yeah. have we have to see if that ever comes back up because right. we're dealing with a couple of X Men issues now, a couple X books that we was talking about on this show that are dealing with displaced people from other times. So uh, we may have the solution to some problems in old men. <laughs> yes, Magneto, yes. Danger, Fine, Call, Maestro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stop what you're doing, Magneto. Someone's got you. Got your answer. Yes. Oh, that would be fucking awesome that would be so cool that would uh, be amazing <laughs> or like dr doom comes to like track it down because he wants to wipe it he's like i don't want any of my past life um in this future i like, get it out of here oh the possibilities the are, pos- are pretty pretty stunning with that yes yes um but yeah i mean as far as the issue goes i not not a bad way for it to end uh, i thought brisson did a good job did his job to wrap mm-hmm. up the story arc and he did that you know, straightforward with still a lot of skill um, behind it. I thought, and like you said, off air, nonstop action movie. <laughs> oh yeah, nonstop. And that's been seems like since the moment that Old Man Logan has met up with the Maestro. That's definitely what it's been. Um, it's been like kind of action movie on the way up there because we get scenes of action and then you know a little bit of break. Mm-hmm. But once they met up, it's just been straight action all the way through, but still moving the story forward. Yes, yes. And I love the way that um, Logan's written this issue, or in the series, oh, really. Yeah. Um, yes. when he's Especially when they're, when they're talking, when he's trying to talk down Malachi, you know, you really, I got like a, a seasoned old man Logan, like wise, mm-hmm. like, you know, he'd actually think, you know, think things out, opposed to, in some of the other issues, they've kind of just written them either off or just he's this maniac who always wants to do something um other other than astonishing he's been kind of lazy which i thought no this this was like you just said season vex he's like malachi right he's like yeah he's like you're not like him i can just picture him yeah, like yeah <laughs> i just picture him in straight action mode and then he turns around and sees his kid and he just turns it off and he's like listen kid yeah it's okay it's okay but, yeah i'm not mad at you <laughs> I'll help you get through this. So I'm like, right. yeah, come on, old man Logan. Talk him down. Talk him down off the ledge. Yeah, oh, and they kind of do that because that's when uh, Hawkeye's like, everyone cover your eyes, and he shoots the flashbang. And I kind of had, this didn't really, it didn't line up necessarily because you know, we see the, the kaboom, or the tomb in this case, tomb. and they're all kind of flying everywhere, and the, the radioactive um, container is also flying as well, and oh, yeah. they were worried that if it could possibly twist open, it would spread the entire um, Hulkling, you know, virus. But in this and, case, and, it kind of it flies off and it stays intact. I, 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 I have an answer for that. Honestly, I do. I really okay. do have an answer for that. An explanation, okay? Um, since it is radioactive, the container it's in is going to be probably pretty yeah. durable. It's going to take a lot. True. Yeah, it's, it's going to take a lot to get it open. I think that the force of somebody with Hulk strength ripping it is probably way greater than the force of that grenade. I'll go with that. I will go with that. But one of my other ones down the road, I think we both agree on off air. Oh, um, I think we do. I think we do. I know why that was done if we're talking about the same thing, but I still was kind of like, uh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can get uh, past that. It was still a good scene. Um, probably a couple things. I think actually there are some off. Uh, well, actually, go, let's go ahead and talk about the Hawkeye being crushed. Yeah, uh, Hawkeye got crushed. And the only explanation that we really got was just like, hey, Malachi helped. Yeah, and it was was crazy is when that happened, I kind of went back to look to see if like maybe there's some kind of sign that Malachi like jumped in there at the last minute. I didn't I didn't see it. And me either, because I thought they probably could have maybe took out one of uh, Mike Diodato Jr.'s crazy 
panel panel transition grid madness. Uh, maybe take a little bit one you know action ish or not action issue excuse me action um, page out <laughs> and maybe just give us a quick explanation on what happened. Um, that's one of the things I I still can't get over. It just it uh, I, I know what happened. I figured it out. What's that? Ready for this? He's not alive. Hawkeye's a hawk. <laughs> no, Hawkeye's a hawk. That'd be weird. Did he? Yeah. I mean, I wonder if that would explain why they kind of threw it away. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Hawkeye's a hawk. Is this yeah. another Alan was right t shirt? <laughs> I, I, I hope not. I hope this is Alan's wrong t shirt. Uh, yeah, that um, would be terrifying. Yeah, and again, I love D. Dodd Jr.'s art, but there was one um, one page where I thought he was maybe a little bit a little bit overboard when he was uh, when Logan was yelling no because he saw Hawkeye die, quote unquote die, and he's like no and rages out, and we get this weird action scene where they're like it's like a Tetris, it literally like Tetris of uh, action mm-hmm. scenes together. It was a little it was a little um, off putting, but I was like okay, I'll go with it. You're you're the man. Oh, you're yeah. awesome. <laughs> But again, three colors, that's um, phenomenal. Like, I even went back after I um, saw that. I was like, I, I can't, honestly, I was like, oh, I, I see it. And I was like, hold on, hold on, wait, wait. No, I, I really don't. So that's an amazing, mm-hmm. amazing job for them to all be on the same page like that. Yeah, that is not an easy feat. It, it makes you wonder if maybe each color is took specific colors. Like, they all did every page together, but they maybe took specific colors. Right. So someone was like, okay, I'm going to take the earth tones and, you know, I'm going to take this and you can take it. Like, they just map it out like that because it's so cohesive that you can't tell no. where one color is stops and the next one begins. No, that's badass. Um, but yeah, let's, let's go ahead and talk about Maestro, though. He kind of... Maestro, yeah. Yeah, so after he decides to give up the fight, he kind of just runs away. Uh, this is one of my one of my nitpicks and issues I had with the issue um, I think is this what we were talking about on the same page? Is what yeah, you're yeah. To? Okay. Him, him, him disappearing into the cave. Yeah, yeah. I, it, it's funny because I almost I I felt bad for him. I was like, oh man, now he's like kind of alone. His his plan didn't work out. I didn't actually didn't expect to be rooting or feel sadness for him. <laughs> but that's good writing right there, and good job, Brisson, for that. Um, but yeah, there seemed to be no lines mentioned of to show concern that Maestro is out there. That. The teleportation device is still out there. We didn't. We don't know. Well, at least we don't know what happened to that uh, device. You know, we don't. I, I was assuming, and this is without actually being shown shown this. I was assuming that when the cave he went to may have been the cave with the device, and maybe he's going to teleport somewhere else, lick his wounds, and then come back. Well, let me. I'm going to page back real quick. And yes, you are right. It looks like the same exact cave. Mm. So no no t no t shirt needed. No nah, no t shirt needed for that one. <laughs> um, yeah, well, and we'll see what he can do with that then. But so obviously they want to keep him around to do something, i e. export some X Men or other characters, <laughs> so, <laughs> or possibly Doom wanting to find that. I don't know. I just thought there would have been some sort of a more of a finale ending to his little story. It kind of just it jumping away abruptly. It was really off putting for me. I thought. I don't know about you. I mean, it was. I was honestly kind of expecting Old Man Logan to kill the Maestro at the end of this. I was expecting Same him man. to die. Um, but knowing who the Maestro is and knowing how long he's kind of been around in the comics it makes sense for him to find a way to slink off somewhere lick his wounds to come back um i also see why they would do it because that is a threat looming constantly in the background now and to be honest the maestro is more dangerous than old man logan's hawk he's he dealt with his banner yeah the maestro is, is way 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 more dangerous and also the fact that the maestro is even in the the uh six current yes the fact that he's there could mean a lot like what we said earlier with, with doom uh slinking around with the fact he has a, the, the teleporter the fact that every all the implications of having him stick around 
quickly overtook my disappointment of him getting away and going behind the cave. Yeah. Oh yeah. I figured you know, if they when went, I first saw it, I was like, him, oh. yeah. I figured if they didn't kill him, they were they're going to use him for hopefully something bigger. Um, I hope it's huge. I hope it needs to be huge because he is. He's got everything he needs right now. Mm-hmm. Without he doesn't even need a Colt because he can just build another one that easily. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> he's, he's got a time machine. He can he can literally hop to another dimension to get an army. Uh, it's cable showdown. We'll say what? Uh oh, who? What? Who? What? 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 <laughs> Man. Uh, but no, in the end, I, I can't remember. If I mentioned this last time we talked about the book. But I I can see some editorial decision to have Hawkeye in the book now that they have announced that we're going to be getting an old man Hawkeye, which I yep. I probably won't be following. And I mean, unfortunately, not for me. It's just not for me personally. Um, but I can see why they kind of threw Hawkeye in here. I still enjoyed Hawkeye's um, appearance in here, but I think it, editorially it was to set up his um, his solo uh, mini series. I mean, or ongoing. I can't, I can't remember which one it is. Of course it was. Of yeah. course. But I enjoyed it still. But what more can we say? Um, yeah, you got anything else on this, really? Well, yeah. I, I'm, I have one more thing that I'm wondering about this. So now we know that we have... Um, uh, what was it? Cam- Cambria and a couple of the yes. younger Hawk kids... Floating around somewhere in the six one six. Yeah, they're, but, everyone's but, moving in. Everyone's moving <laughs> in. Wow, everyone is moving in. Like, yeah. what is going on? Like the the the, the X books as of lately have just become a way to bring time and universe displaced people Together. to the six one six. Well, we've got Jimmy, we've got Bloodstorm, we've got these Hawks now. Like they're just bringing everybody. We've got the uh, what was it, the Marauders that they brought in? Marauders, on, yeah. Um, yeah, like we got a whole bunch of people that are just moving in. <laughs> we 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 don't have any sign that that, that like their universes even still really exist. Right, exactly. That's the yeah, that's the kind of weird thing. Maybe that's maybe that's why they're doing it. Just because there is no other, to my knowledge, there's only the six one six right now. Correct. All besides uh, sixty-five. Sixty-five besides sixty-five. Well, that's what I thought. But then, what was Reed? What's Reed out there doing? Right, right. What is he building? What is he building? What, what has he been building? I mean, for all we know, Reed has been rebuilding the entire multiverse, which means that he would be rebuilding the other timelines and other realities and other um, existences. So, who knows? It was. It's weird. For, it, I can live with the Hawks being here. It's weird for me to have Jimmy and the Marauders being here because they're from the Ultimate Universe, and the Ultimate Universe is supposed to be destroyed and dead. Yeah, and wishful thinking that this everything we are seeing leads to when the oh, of, so. when the turn of uh, the Fantastic Four happens. It's all it all makes sense. It's all explained well. Wishful thinking, of course, but oh, um, that would be amazing, so amazing, because that would make this pay off so much. It would. It would. Because they are, everyone, like I said, yeah, we're, everyone's moving in. <laughs> you, 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 you could have what you said, where you could have Doom coming back in order to yeah. get the time machine because he doesn't want that being around. But then the Fantastic Four are coming back because Maestro has been using that time machine and has been damaging reality or something and is forcing, oh my goodness. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, man. Now that's a good comic book right there. <laughs> that's a good, that's a, that's a series. That's a mini series. That's a good little mini series. Do a little event, a mini event right there. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh my goodness! But yeah, it's a good issue for me. Um, yeah, I, I guess I kind of take back my nitpicks now as far as my show goes, and we'll we'll see how it pays off because it does the the pros outweigh the cons easily. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! And I love, I love, real quick, I just love the scene after Logan freaks out because he just sees, he believes that Hawkeye's dead, and then he runs after Maestro, and he just, Maestro punts him, but with a speed. <laughs> <laughs> I got a good chuckle out of that. Their fight was brutal. Like, between the last two issues, the Maestro and Old Man Logan's fight was brutal. Oh, yes. And I, I enjoyed the fact that at first, Maestro was like, oh, you're nothing like the, the, the Logan I know. You're weaker. And then by the end of this fight, it's like, okay, you're exactly like, you're worse than the yeah, Logan I know. Worse, worse, yes. Because at one point, you see that panel of um, his eyes, or Logan's eyes are missing. 
And it's just half his bla- his face is bloody, mm-hmm. and you really get the the gravitas of the the showdown they just had. Oh yeah. But that is what's up. I can't wait to come back and do some of these, all of these. It's going to be a good time. But what's going to be your score for Old Man Logan this month or this week? I can't remember if this is bi-weekly or not. Um, after discussing it further um, and really enjoying it way more since we discussed it, I'm actually going to do – I'm going to give this a 9. Okay. I this this was this I think this was solid artwork story everything the the potential outcome for what could happen like right right everything yeah maybe oh oh I wonder okay so Ed Brisson he posted on this Twitter like uh, earlier uh, last week and he posted all of his uh, books that he has coming out or the, the at least that he's working on and three of them were blurred out uh oh yeah so I wonder maybe. I wonder if it's possibly that he's going to be tying this into something else that he's working on. I I hope that's the case. Because I was like, oh, maybe it's just some creator-owned stuff, because I would like to see some more of his um, creator-owned stuff. But it seems like maybe Marvel wants to keep him around. He is doing a good job. We'll see. We'll see. That's all I can say. That would, that would be awesome. My, my show just jumped off to be featured in something different. Yeah, just cross my fingers. Just don't give me a, a Maestro miniseries. Please don't. No Maestro miniseries. <laughs> and, and, you know what? The only way I could take a Maestro miniseries if it was taking place after this and we're following him as he's building his master plan. No, I mean, I don't even see the master plan. I think You, would, you, just, you just would rather see I'll, him pop up all of a sudden and... We'll uh, have, maybe right. have his master plan in place already and we're seeing it unfold. Mm, okay. Yeah. All right. I can live with that too. That is what's up. Uh, with that being said, though, I'm going to give this a 9 as well after talking about it. I was going to give it an 8.5, um, but yeah, after talking about it, some of the some of the things I had issues with um, kind of worked for me now. So yeah, I'm definitely at a 9, and I thought this was a good arc ending issue. Yeah. But cool, cool. All right, well, let's go ahead and get on to our headliner book, the main yes. event. The main what event. we all came here for. That's right. And what is that, Danger. Astonishing X-Men number 5, written by Charles Sewells, art by Ramon Rosanes with colors from Nolan Woodard, letters by VCs Clayton Cowles. Xavier shows off his psychic juggling skills and we learn his long-term plan to save the save the world by armoring up the remaining X-Men in the astral plane. While Xavier weaves his long-winded tail, Farouk is spreading his hold across London rapidly. Warren gets punked by Gambit, but comes back to commence his transition into Archangel. To make sure Warren can stay in control, Psylocke will pick up the psychic joysticks, and keep balancing the force. Man, um, what to say about Astonishing X-Men? Um, it manages to astonish again. It was definitely very interesting seeing the uh, professor's juggling ability. Yes. It was also it was also refreshing to see that even though he is in the, the astral plane and he has no physical body, he's still basically as strong as ever. Yes. And, we get even, uh, um, and you're touching all the points I wanted to touch on, too. Because uh, we do get a sense of that strain and the focus that Xavier yeah. holds. It was, I felt, I was, yep, he, he is that powerful. And it's a reminder, too, um, that he is that powerful and we miss him. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> Even though he's also, a dick, we miss him. I, I was just going to say, it's also a reminder of where Professor X was at before he died. <laughs> yes, exactly. That, but that's when we started finding out all this secret stuff he was doing behind the scenes, that, like danger. Um Sorry about that danger. I don't want to bring up bad memories. <laughs> but um, we, we found out about all that secret stuff that he was doing behind the scenes. And it's great to see that uh, they didn't forget that continuity-wise. No, no. And he, he, he gives an explanation on why he didn't save Gambit. But he's like, look, I'm doing this here. I got you guys here. I'm tricking him. Using I'm doing this over here. Yeah, he had to make yeah. sacrifices. He was like, look, someone had to be sacrificed. To be honest, <laughs> it's one less thing for me to have to struggle with doing. Yep, and you, like I guess, yeah, that's why you, that's why you get the sense of the strain because at one point towards the end, his whole body is being covered with that, that sort of plague. Um, oh yeah, and that was that was intention. I love the fact that we are within the story. We're getting this sort of nostalgia, um, mm-hmm. kind of with you know gold, but we get more of a heavy focus of the mind game story uh, opposed to just you know. I know we're dealing with Mojo in that. But um, in the Mojo crossover, but yeah, this feels more natural to me and works way better for me personally. 
Um, I'm I'm in between. This, this which one works better for me? I think they work good for me in different ways. In a way, though, I, I, honestly, this is one of the things we, we run into a lot is continuity. I would love for this to possibly be taking place after Mojo, but well, it was not. Yeah, this is this is in the future. This is a, yeah okay. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how far. Okay, and that's what I'm gonna. Thank you. I I'm gonna bring Thank up you. something later as well because I I have a question. I'm not oh, sure what to, not. what to think of it. I might have an answer then. Um, but it was definitely great to see. Prof- it was great to get an issue with Professor X featured mostly in it. Mm-hmm. Because of the last issue, last few issues we've seen with Professor X, he has like a scene or two. And then this one, he's pretty much in the whole entire issue interacting with his makeshift X-Men team, trying to recruit Phantom X. Which yep. I love the, inter- I love the interaction scene. between him and Phantom X. That was all a really a good scene between the two. Um, especially the more Phantom X talked, the more I was thinking like he reminds me of a bunch of people who used to be X Men, and then Professor X says like, "Yeah, you remind me of some other students I had who thought mm-hmm. the same thing." I'm like, "Yep, yeah, mm, bring them in, bring them yeah. in." And does it to you? Does it seem like they're trying to redeem Xavier before he comes back? Um, yep. Because even even then, like if they try to redeem him by the end of this, I think there's still going to be way more questions that'll have to be answered, you know, post story. Of course, there's going to be some stuff to uh, answer um, post this being done. But I definitely think that they're trying to redeem him because what's Marvel doing right now? What's their big thing that they're all about right now? Legacy. Legacy. And one of the things that we've been, we've been saying it before they announced Legacy and when they were, for, were first doing Resurrection and all that, how we wanted Professor X back, and we missed like the old filling up Professor X at the match and teaching right. the kids and, and motivating everybody. And the, redeeming him would give us a chance to have the old Professor X back, the understanding, caring Professor X that has his dream of of coexistence. And maybe they can tweak his dream a little bit. Maybe now, with the world being a little bit different, it's not just mutants. It'll just be. Um, people with abilities in general, or maybe you know, we have the Unity team, so maybe her be his dream would be a little bit more towards what the Unity team is supposed to represent. Yeah, I think I'm not, I think they're I mean, unfortunately they're about, they're broken up technically. Well, you know, I mean the the principle of the Unity team. Yeah, yep. That's what I mean. Not not necessarily the actual team, just what it represents. Okay. What it represents. Maybe that's what his new dream could represent when he comes back. Right. I can go with that. I can go with that. Uh, let's talk about that opening scene with Gambit, though. <laughs> oh, mon ami. With the with the energy grenade, and there even even the cops were like, Back. "What is an energy what? grenade?" I'm like, "Yeah." I was like, yeah. "What's an energy <laughs> grenade?" Because I was like, "Why hasn't Gambit ever done that before?" This is this is one of the crazy things about um, about some of the X Men book stories is whenever a psychic possesses like somebody who is just like a run of the mill mutant or Someone we're just used to seeing, we all of a sudden find out like they unlocks, have the potential to yeah, do like a special ability. <laughs> yeah, Emma Frost possessed Iceman, and then, then we find like, oh, Iceman has the potential to be Omega level. There's been a story before that said that the Gambit had the potential to be an Omega, but that was before he had part of his brain removed. Mm. So to see to see him do something like this now, that was amazing. Yeah, I've never honestly seen the Gambit that we know charged something that charged. big exactly exactly that was a great because he flies out the building blows up he yeah, grabs he on backflip back <laughs> grabs onto the rope kicks the guys off, or kicks the uh the police one of them a couple of them off the helicopter and then takes control of the helicopter makes his way out and that yeah. was a that was a great that was scene. An awesome scene that was a great and then we get psylocke as well she's uh making that um telekinetic bubble uh mm. around every uh, around everyone and kind of putting them to safety um, yeah, that was a great scene. Great, great scene. Great scene. Um, but yeah, let's see. Well, yeah, so I know we were talking about some of the Xavier stuff. Um, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, the, the Phantom X Hombo was kind of trippy how they kind of weaved in random scenes. I don't know if you got that same feeling as yep. well. Like they were telling a story, they would be like, boom. Like I couldn't tell at points of what, what part of the timeline that was. Not timeline in the whole sense. But of just this issue itself, like where where is that taking place? Is that okay. By the end, I was like, okay, they're on the astral plane. But that was just I never been so tripped out in a while with the book. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. There was some of it that was really tripped me out. I loved 
um, which is in the section you're talking about, because you have Professor X like talking about one thing, and then Phantom X chimes in with something almost completely yes. like something they were talking about like a minute ago, and that kind of jars you off a little bit, but it works because, like you said, A, it's the astral plane, and B, you get a sense that Professor X has already said what he has to say to Phantom X. And Phantom X at first kind of blows him off, and then mm-hmm. he starts kind of talking to the professor. And at the same time, was, did you catch there was one spot, like it was like one panel, where it looked like Professor X may have pulled Phantom X to the side again? Again? Yeah, that's what that's one of the things that really tripped me out. Yeah. yeah. It's, it, it's, it seemed like he pulled um, uh, Phantom X, Mystique, and Rogue to the side. But then within that, within he pulled Phantom X yeah, to the side personal, again. For a personal conversation. He, for anybody listening who's confused, if you've ever seen Inception, that's what he did. Yeah. <laughs> that is exactly what he did. He pulled him to another level and had that side conversation. I was like, first it threw me off a little bit. Then I was like, Professor X is way strong. He's, like, he's yeah, doing he's doing some stuff. He, this is a new Professor X. Because, and it's explained a little bit. Because earlier in the uh, during that time, not even earlier in the issue, during that conversation, what Professor X ends up talking about that made it jarring was the fact of what he's been doing since he got to the astral plane. Yes, yes, he's yes, like I, yes. He's, he's like I died, and then somehow um, the Shadow King pulled me to the astral plane, and we've been battling the astral plane since I got here, and it feels like we've been battling for thousands of years. Like we've had so many battles. Like it's just so crazy how they've been going back and forth this whole time. Yeah, in a sense, they almost got bored with that, so then they started to make their their own stories. Yeah, it was like and, first we did. Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say because at one point he says uh, we ended up recently we've been you know playing around with time travel and then mutant mm-hmm. killing plague. Yeah. So that bears the question for me: Did they create that, or is this is that really just a meta statement? The, you, you know what? L- let me let me say what I was gonna say real fast. Yeah, and yeah. Lead right back into what you're saying. That's why I love this. Book. Um, <laughs> they 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 went from because he he goes over how they fought. He's like, you know, at first it was a psychic battle. Then we fought with energy. Then we fought with emotions. Then mm-hmm. we fought with feelings. And then we fought with um, stories where we started, you know, putting our own little uh, people against each other. And then like you got to the point where he's like, yeah. Then we started doing time travel and plays and stuff. I'm sitting like, wait a minute. Um, are they saying in the purposes of them being in the astral plane they did this or yeah are they did they, 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 they somehow reach out. get to a point where they can reach outside the astral plane and affect things on the the regular um mortal plane yeah. like are they have they have some of the stories that we've been reading since professor x died been because professor x and the shadow king are fighting on the astral plane like <laughs> Are some of these storylines happening because of that? Were they responsible for the Terrigen? For the blue and, team. Like, for the blue team? Is that really them? Which, if that was, my mind would be blown. If they got so powerful on the astral plane that they were able to reach out and affect the regular reality, that would and be it amazing. Seems, it seems that the, that's what they're working towards because they keep getting they kept getting bored with, you know, uh, things just weren't. You know, working for him anymore. So obviously, you have to come uh, keep uh, creating and creating. And then at that point, yeah, I mean, you can probably do anything you want, even if it's just like a sprint of you know, a little seed that makes its way out into the real world. You know, mm-hmm. that's 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 mind blowing. Which 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 would be lightweight hinted at later in the issue because Professor X says like him and the Shadow King, they are p- quite possibly two of the most yep. powerful psychics that have ever existed on the planet Earth. So that makes you think, if they're if they're both like extremely, if psychically they, if, if okay, let's look at it this way, if they're both extremely strong psychics, and then being on the astral plane somehow amplifies their mental ability, because the astral plane is nothing but mental, it's all mental. Mm-hmm. So a psychic is already stronger in the astral plane. So if they're going from being extremely powerful to possibly being psychically omega level powerful, and then they're fighting each other. That yeah, what you said, the, the the force of that fight could possibly somehow plant seeds or throw seeds out into the regular reality and affect it somehow. And if that's the case, that would be amazing. And that would be honestly, in my opinion, one of the most amazing things that's ever been done in X Men. And we're, this book is supposed to be earth shattering at by the end. Like things that, are supposed to blow our mind and really change the landscape. So it, it, if that's the case, it would. If that was the case, if they have become so powerful in the astral plane 
so far beyond what they were on the the mortal plane, which was already Professor X when he was here was already considered the most powerful psychic. But if both of them become that powerful there, and the force of their fight and their mental battle, if that is actually affecting reality and has been affecting reality for a while, and no one's really realized it, that would be amazing. That would actually probably help Marvel. <laughs> yeah, I'm jumping shit from the story, and I'm talking about no, the company. No, no, no. I... That, that would probably help Marvel because some of those stories that we don't like all of a sudden make sense. Makes sense. And all of a sudden, have a greater payoff than what, what the, than the way they ended. Yeah, because then we find out, like, okay, th- yeah, everything was messed up. We had continuity. Yeah, that might be reaching it though. If they, I think that might kind of ruin it. The, the <laughs> yeah, the thought if of it. it. <laughs> if, if it just became a crisis, a event. crisis, right, right, exactly. <laughs> crisis on the astral plane. Yeah, we don't need all that. Oh uh, man! Well, I would, I would definitely be down with um, their battle affecting some of the things here. Oh yes, like, easily. If, like, like, that, like that play thing. If that is actually something that was caused by their fight on the astral plane, that would be really interesting. That's yeah. It makes me go back and re- want to read because IVX Charles Soul was a part of IVX. Yeah. Um, would it be crazy if that was planned the whole entire time? I'm not saying it was. Not going to go there and mm-hmm. definitely give that credit. But if he was given this story, he was given this series based off of the pitch for the idea, right? Because this wasn't a series that was going to happen until he pitched this idea, and apparently it was so it was really amazing, right? Mm-hmm. What if, if we don't know when that idea was pitched? What if it was pitched during the time that he was doing his work on IVX? And he was like, yeah. "This is what I really want the ultimate goal to be." And there's usually but, a timeline, usually a timeline in place. Yeah. So yeah, like, this is going to be the ultimate goal, but it's not going to appear to be ultimate goal until we get there. Man, I, I, my, my mind is already blown. I want to see how this ends. Um, I, I we keep saying sweet, this every sweet time. Victory, I think it will be. Every time we get to astonishing, like we're we're just amazed with every issue. Like honestly, I haven't seen a bad issue so far of astonishing. I only have one problem with this issue, and we're not even done with this scene though. Cause... Yeah, we're not even done with the scene because <laughs> I'm not want to go to kind of focusing on Phantom X. And kind of giving him a retcon, it seems. Um, they're trying yeah, to, they do. They do. yeah, trying to make him more into uh, more of a hero, so to say. Give up his uh, his bad ways of always, you know. He, he, at one point, he even says, "I'm not French. Like I, I was programmed to do all these uh, these heist type of deals, but that's not me, and I'm not even French." <laughs> um, which, which is amazing because. Uh, the the weapons plus program for anybody who knows is the actual overall program that had the uh, that Wolverine came from. Like originally, it was um, weapons plus, and they had numbers. So there's like a weapon zero one all the way up to I think twenty something. Um, it's is when they stopped giving actual numbers. But uh, Phantom X comes from the weapons plus. When it stopped being numbered, it became weapons plus. And he comes from that, and he's not the only mutant like this that they they made into a master thief. There's another mutant who popped up after Wolverine's death, um, who was similar, where they had engineered her to be the the greatest thief. They engineered her abilities to allow her to be a great thief. So for some reason, there's a fascination with making a, a super mutant thief. Yeah, and Phantom <laughs> X is just like one of the few ones to do it. But it was interesting to hear him say, like, yeah, I'm not even French. I'm like, oh, man, this whole entire time, I was under the impression that <laughs> Phantom X was French. Yeah, and that's where they're still kind of uh, having that side conversation within the side conversation. Um, and then he's, he's uh, Xavier says a really ominous uh, line and scene at the end. Uh, he's like, we, we have, we're running short on time, but we have all the time in the world. Like, they're, yep. those two are secretly planning something else. Like, he, he sees something... Probably with uh, within Phantom X's illusions, I'm assuming that yep, he that's can use that he can use for um, to win this battle. Hopefully, um, I'm still have no idea how how this can work because rules are everywhere when you come when you bring in the whole Inception vibe. <laughs> when you bring in the Inception vibe and you bring in the fact that they're on the astral plane, let's just not get lost. That's all I have. It's, it's, <laughs> it's really hard to figure out what the rules are. Um, when I saw Professor X trying to basically recruit him, and Phantom X finally was basically doing the monologue, and he ended up talking about the illusions, I, I instantly was like, okay, maybe Professor X 
can use that somehow in the astral plane. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure how that ability works there, how it would work. Um, I, I, I'm having a, I have a theory that maybe it's going to be in part due to something the Professor X is going to do because obviously what he's doing, he even says he's trying to distract the Shadow King and keep his mind so scattered around the place that he can't focus on just one thing. Right. And that's that's going to be, I think that's going to be the downfall of the Shadow King. That's going to be part oh, of how yeah. they're going to have a hole, hole somewhere. There's, I think there's already a hole forming because between what Professor X is doing, plus I, we know for a fact in reality he's controlling um, Old Man Logan and Gambit. Um, he may have just got control of Bishop, and we don't know exactly how the little virus is affecting the other uh, people that they're touching. Mm-hmm. Do it. Like we don't know if maybe every time they touch somebody, part of the Shadow King goes there, and that's what that actually is. It's part of the Shadow King. Yeah, because so he's, he's, already... he's trying to build his web. So yeah, it's yeah. probably just a little seed that he's planting everywhere. But that's the thing. Even by the web, you, it can only spread and stretch so far before it becomes unstable. Like he can only stretch everything so for himself so far before, you know, he's not as powerful as he was when he was just one entity. Right. So I think that's probably how they're going to use the uh, the um, illusions from Phantom Man. I think that that's going to play in there somehow. Okay. Cause yeah, and as he's telling that, they finally reveal that he's going to armor them up. Yep. And, and I, I thought, thought I thought that cool. was funny. I thought that was I funny. thought it was funny because if you remember way back when on a whole completely different show, um, we talked about the Shadow King, mm-hmm. and, and I remember the the fight that him and Professor X had, and I was, was responding. I told you about the. Uh, Conquistador armor, yes. which you see on the cover, and I said that's the armor that Professor X wore when he fought the Shadow King. It's funny that he gives them similar armor to what he wore. Yeah, throwing in some nostalgia there. Yeah, that was some nostalgia. I was like, oh yeah, they got the other uh, little Conquistador armor, and the, the, I like their armor. Um, I have to admit, it looks pretty good. Yeah, it was cool. It was cool, and I thought the although the art didn't follow like that sort of uh, Diodato or uh, Pacheco mm-hmm. style, I thought <clears> it, it it wasn't a step back at all, and I really dug it. Um, that was my one spot that I had an issue with, 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 was with the art, and it was really only really? one, okay. one, it was, it was only one place. It was literally one spot. Um, if you go back to the beginning, the first page, the third panel down with Professor X, I just don't like the depiction of him with that, that, from that angle. It looks weird. Uh, I am paging back now. When he's in the middle? No, the one underneath at the very bottom, the third panel. Oh, really? Yeah. I like that one a lot, actually. Yeah. I, I prefer the one above it. Oh, the and one that one. Just, the, it just looks. He looks douchey in that 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 bottom panel. It just well, looks he, weird. He was kind of being a. I, I think that was a part where he was kind of being a douche because uh, he was trying to explain to Rogue. Yeah, he was kind of explaining to Rogue like, "Hey, I, I had to get. I had to have some few pawns, and Old Man Logan and Gambit were one of them. Sorry about that." Yeah, <laughs> that was the moment she was like, "You didn't save Gambit." He's like, "Uh, no, I didn't save Gambit. I, I had to let him go." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which which is funny because uh Rogue seems awfully concerned about the Gambit. Like we might be trying to lightweight uh hint that uh she does still have those feelings for Gambit and we may be seeing more in a, a a series coming up real soon. Yeah, I'm not sure where that takes place in the the timeline. Listen, I, know this is I, in can, the I can hope. Oh. I can hope. <laughs> I can hope, okay. I am one of those people who thoroughly enjoys um, Gambit and Rogue and think that they need to find a way to put the two together. Well, we're, like, well they're getting that miniseries. We know that's no, happening. No, you, you, you know what I mean. I don't oh, mean yeah, the ongoing, ongoing. The ongoing, like actual yeah. relationship. Like, I oh, think it's, just I think, in general. I think they've okay. earned it. I, yeah, I think they've earned it. After all these years, I think they've earned a way to be together. Especially with this series so far, honestly. <laughs> um, and we haven't even talked about the stuff that's going on outside. Like the Ministry of Defense. Um, they are... At this point, getting they're like, destroyed. hey, yeah, getting, they destroyed, still there? getting destroyed, and they're like, hey, it's time to nuke Oh, the place. yeah, they're talking about nuke the place. Yeah, nuke, they're talking about nuke the place. Nuke yeah. the place, because it's spreading, and his fruits, uh, virus is spreading rapidly now, because <laughs> Gambit's now, or Bish- Gambit's now spread to uh, Bishop, and Bishop Old Man Logan. Bishop's spreading to people, and Old Man Logan, and yep. it's, it's funny, because they said nuke the place, and the one dude's like, nuke the place, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, what are you talking <laughs> about? We're only, we're only in like a small portion of London right now, man. Give them a chance. <laughs> uh, yeah, take, take, yeah, take it from me. London's pretty big. That little area that they're in, they 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 can still turn this around. He's he's jumping the gun a little too too fast. Oh yeah, 
and but it's at the same time things it's just trying to uh, portray that things are ramping up outside oh, yeah. it does feel like that as well um how did you uh, uh, do i want to jump right ahead real quick um unless there's anything else kind of in the middle but there really is so much to i mean we're probably gonna not touch on everything um, but there is a lot. I think we, as far as we're, we're continuing on the same pace, though. Um, how did you feel about the whole angel bit? Because we knew at some I, point he was going to turn to Archangel. Um, we knew at some point. Yeah. Um, I've been for you? out to. Yeah. Well, I've been out to loop a little bit. So if you remember, when we first got here, and I was like, "Well, we have Archangel on the cover, but we don't have Angel." Mm-hmm. And then I found out, like, "Oh, he's got a Hawk thing going on, where like yeah. it's their their separate personality." Which I actually kind of like that for Angel. I kind of wish they would have figured that out and done that a lot sooner in, in the history because I think that's that is kind of unique and cool to have him be like, literally an angel and a demon mm-hmm. at the same time. Like that's pretty much literally what he is. You're right. Yep. Um, and uh, while I did enjoy you know the time when he was stuck as Archangel but was still you know uh, Warren basically, I liked this a lot and I was wondering when and how long it was going to take before they released Archangel. Um, especially because now knowing that they're two separate personalities, I want to see how vicious, because he's making it seem like Art Angel is now vicious. Like, he's just, he's a, a cold buddy killer. There's right. nothing, no, needs, no remorse, that's no why nothing. Psylocke to balance it. Balance the so force. I, so, <laughs> so knowing that, I am definitely was waiting to see um, when this was going to happen and how it was going to affect everything. Did so, it I mean, it, work, it, it works for me right now. Yeah. yeah, I'm down with it. It does seem like at this point, that's their last little, for, from Sarah's perspective, that's their last ditch effort because she doesn't know what's going on at Astral Plane right now. Things out here are getting out of hand. Angel, he tried to, you know, increase the peace with the army and it's not working. Right. We need Archangel now. Yeah, yep. She's like, hey, buddy, we I'll help you out, but we... Now or never, we need you. <laughs> because and it, and it's, it, it worked for me on another level too because they kind of um, <clears throat> legacy. They kind of went back and hinted at the um, and talked about the relationship. The relationship, that yep. Dialogue and Angel, and that's yet again that is one of those relationships that have been in um, comics that I always liked. Yeah, I, I like Angel and Psylocke together. It seemed and... very brief, but um, I, I did enjoy it. It was always cool <laughs> chemistry. Like I know. Yeah, yeah Legion Quest. Um, that was a big part of their storyline, mm-hmm. which you can hear on our feed. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 but it reminded me like there sometimes um, in the X universe in particular. I, I, this is in comics in general, but I was specifically talking about the X universe. Um, sometimes certain couples are put together that just work and just make sense and are just awesome to read and see in the books and in yeah. the stories. And then for some reason, some writer was like, you know what? It's going to be better if we broke these people up. We move them apart. And it's like, no, you don't understand. It's like, no, you can't take... No, you can't do that. <laughs> certain certain couples work, certain couples don't work. In the case of Psylocke and Angel, it works. In the case of um, X-23 Laura and Angel, it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. And maybe someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, th- I believe this is the penultimate um, issue to this arc. Because I believe, if I heard straight, there's two two different arcs within this. Okay. And I think there's one more issue to this arc. I could be wrong. It kind of seems like a it could be a penultimate issue. But uh, I I haven't looked at previews for Astonishing. I I won't because I want to each month I want to be surprised when I when I read this book. I'm trying to see how they could do two arcs because I mean, you you could I guess cuz it's 12 issues, right? Right. So I guess the first arc could be the whole stopping the Shadow King's um, plan. Maybe pushing him back to the astral plane. And then I guess the second arc would be bringing Professor X back. Or the repercussions of them causing uh, IVX or in the (laughs) Terrigen Mist. (laughs) Yeah. Them them realizing like, oh, you guys affected this out here. We need to fix this now. Now we can fix it because we understand what happened. Yes. And shout out to Nolan Woodard on art this month on the X-Men books. He did that um, last two issues of All New Wolverine. Okay. Fucking phenomenal. And he, he killed it on this issue, I thought, as well. Um, so they're, they're keeping up the the badass artists on here. So I'm really digging that. But yeah, I could talk about this book for hours, as, as we always say, because there's just so much. So much to digest within here. And we, I know we're probably skimming over a few things. Uh, but I think we've hit a lot of the marks for the most part, though, and we can we can't wait to see what happens next. <laughs> oh no. 
because it is shit is going down and yeah we're uh, great i didn't like the i didn't i wasn't a big fan of uh, angel's dialogue as he was turning into archangel it's like if you will save if you will save me i will save them i, will save the I was like eh, eh, i could have maybe expected a badass line no <laughs> that's a nitpick personal personal preference but with that being said, what is going to be your score after discussing this book? Um, I, I've ran into an issue with Astonishing X-Men since the beginning. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I meant to talk about that. I forgot. What's up? Uh, the issue I've been running into with Astonishing X-Men from the beginning is when it comes time to rate them. When it comes what? Oh, when it comes okay. time to rate them. <laughs> to rate them, yes, yes. Because the first issue, you remember the first issue, I wanted to give a 10. And I was like, no, I don't want to jump off and just give the first issue a perfect score. And then everything behind it goes down. Yeah, because you'll, so, you'll, you'll regret that. So I'm going to stick with what I believe, if I remember correctly. I've been given every issue of X, of Astonishing X-Men, which has been a 9. Um, so good, so rewarding, so much to talk about. I can't wait for this arc to be over to see how blown my mind is going to be. Yes. And also so I can go back and reread it again. I think depending on how they end this ish, this, this arc, the, the series, if it's something that affects a previous story that we've read, like if it does affect IVX, I think I will go back and reread IVX all the way through and Same then reread it like Same back to back. Here. Just to get the feel for, like, okay, yeah, this makes total sense. This should have been a, a total arc by itself. That would but, be um, brilliant if they do split up the arcs and we get an explanation. Like, I will take five issues of explanation on what they cause. I will eat it up. <laughs> mm. You brought, you gave us mm. the action for the first half. Now let's mm. slow it down. <laughs> mm. Yes. Yeah. I agree. Yes. Wow. Nine. Nine, nine, nine. All right. I got to go a little higher. I, I figure we might be on the same page. I got to go 9.5. Um, I, I, I want it to so badly, <laughs> but I'm like, I, I don't want to get too close to the. I'm, I'm already close enough to the 10 territory. I don't want to do that. Yeah, I got I to do nine. I was at a nine, uh, <sighs> but after talking about it, I, I do have to go 9.5 because it's, it's, this book is enticing. I love it. I love it. I love it. It has everything I want in an X-Men book. It, it grabs you. It really does. And it makes you think. Yeah, you know, we can theorize about this book for, for ages and just gush over it and really, really, really analyze it. Um, but yeah, that is our review for that. You sure you don't want to go a little bit higher before we get out of here? <laughs> Am I allowed to? Am I allowed to bump that up and go 9.5? Can yeah, I go you can, what I want? You can always bump it. And you can only bump it when we're talking about the review itself. So yes. Okay. Then yes. I, I don't feel bad then about. Because that's what I originally wanted to give it. I wanted to give it the 9.5. I felt bad about doing it, but now, no, I don't. I'm bumping it to 9.5. Yes, indeed. With that being said, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be back with a few fastball tweets. tweets and if you want to have your fastball tweets or join in the conversation as well about the x-men comics released that week um head on over to our twitter which is at comics corner pod every wednesday it'll be posted as the pen pete all right <laughs> pen pete uh pen tweet at 12 p.m eastern standard time and it'll be up there until about fr- uh, saturday night uh get your thoughts in join the discussion with everyone it's usually a good time um, but we always greatly appreciate it if you aren't on twitter you want to email us you can do so also at columbus comics corner at gmail.com and we'll take them that way as well um, let's go ahead and get into our first one, though. It is with Justzilla at Sean Sandre 2000. Uh, someone needs to warn the superhero community about Maestro being loose, and I can tell Mystique is probably going to die based on solic- solicitations. And I definitely agree with you as far as someone needs to warn him. That should have happened in this issue of Old Man Logan. <laughs> um, but it didn't. But at the same time, we have our theories, and we can only hope um, for the better. Uh, as far as Mystique goes, I... I remember I called it, not called it, but I was like, hey, I, I can see it, Mystique. Uh, could possibly be the red shirt uh, coming soon. 
because um, she, especially based with this issue, they are really heavy, uh, focusing on um, Phantom X being the, the winner, uh, the breadwinner of the family uh, in that issue. But And solicitations can sometimes lie as well. But what are your thoughts on that, Alan? I don't think that Mystique will die. Um, I think she's too much of a well-known staple in the X-Men community for them to kill her. They're getting too much back to like the whole legacy thing. You're not going to kill off a character like that. Um, there are other X characters that are you know B or C list characters you could bring in to fill that position. But I don't think that Mystique's going to die. Um, and of course, when it comes to Maestro, yeah, yeah, warn the superhero community, warn everybody, <laughs> Maestro is going to lose. <laughs> they, I think they would have done it at the end of this issue, but they made it a point to reference the fact that their communicators were broken. So, yeah, tell everybody, shot her from the mountaintop, <laughs> Maestro is here, and he's dangerous, and there may be a chance he has a time travel machine. Yeah, that, hopefully that picks up, that has to pick up soon, because that's, that's got to, that has to ripple. Oh, Unless yeah. he's just going to hide out for like another year and then come back. That'd be kind of lame. I kind of forget about it at that point. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't make us wait a year for this Marvel, please. No, 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 no. Uh, and thank you for that as always, Sean. And the next one is from Steve Sellers at Shadewing. Only picked up Astonishing this week. It was okay, and the reveals were about it as expected. I wish Soul would stop with the meta references. And... Yeah, I don't mind the meta references too much. I, I was going with it for now. I think there might be a bigger... If it pays off, there might be a bigger picture to the fact that they are giving us these meta ref- references. Um, but what were some of your thoughts on that? I personally don't have an issue with meta references. We are in a society where everything has some kind of meta reference somewhere in it. Um, I mean, watch YouTube for a little bit. You're going to see reviewers that have meta references in the reviews. Watch a movie. It's going to be some kind of meta references. Some are mm-hmm. more heavy, you know, like, like a Deadpool, for instance. Right. Deadpool is, would be way more heavy handed with, with a meta reference. Um, yeah, I think it's more woven. It's more woven yeah. into the story. Yeah, as as exactly. Being random. Yeah. Uh, if you weave it in there, it's not as bad. It's better than just being like, oh, I got to be meta here. Meta. Mm-hmm. Here's some more meta for you. Meta. Yeah, and I still think there are some reveals that weren't necessarily expected for me personally. I think there are more to come um, that aren't expected as well. But we'll definitely see. Oh, yeah. Um, what were your thoughts on that? Um, Listen, we've been getting... We got some crazy reveals in this one, and from um, the conversation we had, I think that there are going to be some extremely wild and crazy and um, almost unbelievable reveals that hopefully will ripple and touch other stories. Mm -hmm. And hopefully maybe by the time this is all ended, um, maybe Steve will have a different perspective on it. Maybe it makes more sense um, once we get the, the final picture of what's what's to happen. And I am, I am on it. I am ready. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I want to happen. I want this to be so good and be so big that it actually affects and gives us different perspective. You know, it's funny. I would actually kind of people might yell at me for this one when they, when I say this, but I would almost compare this. To, I would compare, it, excuse me, to DC Metal as far as the the vent type of feel goes, and the fact that there are repercussions. Granted, like with metal. There's like a weird alternate universe, but mm-hmm. it, but unnecessary. I mean, technically, we're in this. We're in the astral plane. Um, but yeah, I know it's like a, little, it's like an alternate universe. Right, right. So I mean, I'm I'm not sure if you, if you agree with my comparison or not. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I actually do. Um, ripples. <laughs> yeah. Ripples. And there there need to be major ripples because there's a lot going on. <laughs> Oh, a yeah, lot. there's a ton going on. Um, but uh, also, as always, thank you for that, Steve. And our next one is from Spoopy Josh at Bobby Drake, Drake and Josh um, replying. And he says, uh, the bromance and Angel is great. Best part of the last two issues in Iceman. Uh, I can't wait to see where this goes. Yeah, I mean, Angel stood out for me. I think I thought he had better lines, but I still thought he was wasted, um, unfortunately, in the end. Uh, but hey, I mean, yeah, he was the better. I would say that he was the better part of the last two issues. Um, I think all the champions, really, uh, for me personally, were the best part of those issues. But once we didn't get any more of them, 
I thought they were the whole story is useless personally um, but I wish I could say I wish I can't wait to see where this goes but I I want it to end personally I don't know uh yeah bromance was, was good they had a little funny little line in there when they got into the room mm-hmm. uh, we talked about this not even a uh, wingspan he couldn't stretch his wings that was that was <laughs> that was pretty good that's a pretty good line that was um, but the series just isn't doing enough for me. Um, I understand, you know, the move to LA is going to shake some things up a little bit, but yeah. I, I honestly uh, isn't so because he has to deal. Isn't with, yeah, because he has to deal with his um, his parents finding out there's two Bobbies. So yeah, he has to come well, back. they. I, I think they dropped the ball with the um, chance to actually use the champions in this in the story. The champions, Bobby. Bobby, you know, there was, there was, there's a lot of stuff dropped in there. Uh, I don't know. Just I want them to tell the two Bobby story and then just Marvel in the series, please. Okay. Just in the series, something something better can take its place. There are, there are other things that could get better focus because there's there's a couple other books where they didn't start off so good and they've started to you know stumble and find themselves and, and actually start becoming good. Right. Iceman's not one of those books. This thing has stumbled from the from the start. From the start, it's, it's honestly managed to somehow get worse. Like why wouldn't I don't know? They're allowing him. Uh, I think Marvel is allowing Cena Grace to tell his story, which is perfectly cool. Do your thing. Um, but I just would have figured maybe they, they saw that with Cable, and that wasn't working, or they already had plans that he would be going over to DC to do the Wonder Woman stuff. Um, I thought there should have been art and writing change up with Iceman. But I can't. It's hard to tell if this is an ongoing series, or it's going to end at at twelve issues. Because I know it goes into January, uh, January or February, I believe. So I figured they would have let's cut just, the ties by January. Let's just let's just end it, yeah. please. Let's just end it. Yeah, and sorry for again for everyone to who likes this book. Um, there are some good moments. There are some, but it's just overshadowed by. Um, just overall bad writing but let's go ahead and end with our next and last fastball tweet uh, sitting in and just at the nick of time is uh, Daily X-Men Facts at Daily X-Men Facts Astonishing is just so awesome truly one of the coolest X stories of recent times I uh, love everything Astral playing or everything Astral especially uh, the sick armor come through Archangel yes come through Archangel as well and I think we echo everything you say. Um, as far as this one, for me personally, too, it is one of the coolest X-Men stories since uh, Resurrection and in a while. <laughs> and in a while. Uh, yeah, you know exactly how I feel about um, Astonishing, how we've been feeling from the beginning of the show with Astonishing. It has not let us down. Every, this is what issue, was it five, six? Uh, five now. Mm-hmm. Five. This is it, this is five solid issues, and I can't think of any book that we've read that we've done in, like an ongoing series on any of our that's shows. Above a nine every every review. <laughs> that's that's a nine or above every issue, and it's consistent as from the beginning all the way through. Because this technically, this is almost the halfway mark. Next issue yeah. is the halfway mark, but every issue is has a consistency to it, and it either ramps up or. Um, just moves the story along at the perfect pace it needs to move. Uh, this is the best X book like out right like, now. This, this is the, this, if someone asks me what's the best X Men or X related book, I'm going to say Astonishing X Men. Yep, yep. Same here, same here. And I have to keep it in the back of my head uh, that we we did review um, IVX. Yep. And we were loving it those first like, uh, it was, like probably three or four issues, and Charles Soule was it, writing it, and it, it, it was fall apart. Issues. It was three issues, unless you count the zero, then it was four. It was the first four issues right, right. that we liked. When it, when it got halfway through the story, that's when it fell apart. Yeah, so we have to, I'm still keeping that in the back of my head that that did happen. But we'll, it, right now, I've, had, I've loved it more than IVX when we were reading that and reviewing it. Oh, yeah. This, is, this has been way better than when we were reading um, IVX. And... That explanation you gave is exactly why I try to hold off so much on giving the X Men, the Sasha X Men issues, the nines. The nines. Yeah. I, I, I know what happened. <laughs> Something last could time. happen. Yeah, exactly. Depending on that issue or what they did last or what their last series was. 
Yeah, we don't, and we don't, you know, at the time we had some other hands in the pot, so it was hard to tell, you know, who. And two of my favorite writers at the time, to, or still to this, uh, at this time, Jeff Lemire, Jeff Lemire, or Jeff Lemire, I forget how you pronounce it, and Charles Sewell. Well, and, that, and that's the thing, and also that was a big event, so who knows how much of corporate was like, okay, guys, uh, we like what you got here, but we need this in there, you need to take this up. We don't know how much was dictated to them at mm-hmm. that time. Maybe this so, is a maybe astonishing is almost an apology. Uh, could be to IVX in the end. Could be. You uh, know, maybe at at the time it was like this is how we could fix it. I'm gonna pitch this as a different story and boom. Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed. Yeah, like I said, we could talk about we and we will continue for a while after this. Even when this maxi is over, uh, we'll be can talk talking about it again. Best believe oh, that. Yes. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that is all the fastball tweets. Thank you, everyone, as always, for sending those in. Um, that is the episode, episode twenty-one. Um, next week we got episode twenty-two. I think that's a light week um, for X-Men books next week. As I'm looking through it now, I know Generation X number eight comes out, so there we go with that. Uh, what else do we have? Yeah, yeah, that should be good. We are looking forward to that. While you're looking for that, that's a prime example of a book that stumbled in the beginning, but actually started finding its footing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And then we do have X-Men Gold number 15, um, which I thought was written by Colin Bunn. Hopefully, hoping it was written by him, but it was just a misprint. <laughs> uh, but we'll see what happens with that. I believe, I know I'm probably missing something else, but I believe we only have two books next week. We, yeah, We might. It's not quite time for All New yet. It's not quite time for Jane or Cable. Yeah. So, that, yeah. That's the list. We only got two books next week. So it's going to be a light one. Uh, maybe we'll find something to throw in there as well. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what we can do with that. Uh, but yeah, again, thank you for listening, everyone. I always do a bad job of this, but I should plug uh, upcoming stuff that we have as far as the episodes that are coming out this week. And Shameless gonna, plug. Yeah, so I'm going to try to do that now, from now on. <laughs> uh, this week we have we do have Uncanny Avengers number 29 coming out, um, so Rob will be joining me for that. That will probably be out on Friday. Uh, we're doing, obviously, X-Men Monday. We are doing our Spider-Women um, crossover event uh, review. We're actually going to be playing that uh, once we get off of here. So that's going to be coming up. That was really good. I wish spider Gwen was still written that well. Um, but it's kind of falling off. And I, actually, I know that we're going to get off topic. <laughs> we're going to get off topic for a second. But um, what we were, I did send you the news uh, about Robbie Rodriguez. Rodriguez? Yeah, yes. delaying his ending to spider Gwen. Um, quick thoughts. What were you, cause we, we, yeah, excuse me, didn't get a chance to talk about it. Quick thoughts. Um, wasn't you never quite sure how long someone's going to work on any given series, um, especially when someone's been there pretty much from the inception and the beginning of the series. So it's kind of interesting to see that um, he's even considering now, you know, uh, stepping away. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I honestly would have thought that the the Gwenum story going on right now would have been the perfect time to step away, do an end song. But you know, apparently he's got some other plans. So who knows? Maybe we're going to get um. Uh, Garnage next or something like that. Boom. All right, cool. Uh, quick little spider wing plug for you. And so, again, thank you for listening, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get out of here. You got anything else, Alan? Uh, nope. See you guys on the next episode of Whatever I'm On. There we go. <laughs>